Hey what's going on everyone, for this video I'm going to revisit the PS5 controller. I'm going to introduce a way that you can customize your PS5 controller without having to use paint. Let me show you first what I got here from Extreme Rate. They sell a bunch of controller customization stuff like shells and buttons. In this package I got a touchpad for the PS5 controller with some thumbstick rings. They also provide some tools and screws for you to use in case you need it. Or the buttons to replace the original PS5 controller with. And the last thing is a purple decorative strip. The next package is by EG Game DIY. It's an all black PS5 controller housing shell. Next thing I'm gonna do is take this PS5 controller and replace everything. The whole shell and all the buttons except the thumbsticks. I got everything ready now and one thing I forgot to mention earlier was that the black shell, the black replacement shell came with this little screwdriver that they provided as well. But I'm gonna use the one I always use which is this one. I feel like it's much better. The tools they provide they're not that bad but you could use better ones. First thing you're gonna do is grab your prying tool and take out the decorative strip that you have right now. Next thing is the L1 and R1 buttons. Grab your prying tool, point it this way. Dig in through here and put your other thumb on top of it so that it doesn't fly somewhere else. And you're just gonna pop that out. Same thing for the L1 button. There's four screws that you're gonna have to take out. One is right here, second one is here, third one is here fourth one is right here after you removed all the screws just look over here you're gonna find two locks use your prying tool and just kind of dig in there to push it forward same thing with the other side right here then just turn your controller on either side your tool you're gonna dig right in and just slide it that side is gonna open up and then same thing for the other side from there you can just pretty much just like push up until it comes out you don't have to push out too much and this is the back shell next you're gonna want to remove your battery so just move it aside a little bit then if you're gonna use your fingers just make sure you have good grip then you can slowly just wiggle it out and that's only because i'm used to doing these kinds of stuff so if you're a beginner maybe use tweezers and slowly just wiggle try not to use too much strength when you do it now this little piece that can come out of there so just make sure it comes off like this that's because we need to take the screw out and it's gonna take off this whole piece right here Once you got the screw out, you can take out the battery holder. After that, you need to disconnect four ribbon cables. One being here, the other one here, the other one here. The last one is right here. Now to take the green board out, you have two little locks. One's right here and the other one hiding right here. You just have to kind of push it aside and it'll come loose. Once you got one side, just do the other one. Carefully move your ribbon cable. Watch out for the rumble cables too. And there you go, that's connected, so don't pull it. You have four more screws to take out. One's right here, right here, here, and here. Once you take those four screws out, the whole black piece is gonna come off. Just be careful with this. Make sure it doesn't get caught. And there you go. That's your whole front piece. Now you're just gonna remove your touchpad. Take off all the pads. You can take out all your buttons now.
for this one you can just face it on the front this comes out and make sure it just doesn't get stuck here you have another pad pull that one out too my new shell ready now I'm just gonna install the o-rings make sure you align these parts right here with the openings once you got it in you can go all the way around pushing inwards and there you go he's gonna finish the other one now you're gonna put in your old gummy from the original control put it into the new one next we're gonna put this little piece in first put the cable in through here you can easily place it back and you have a little lock right there for it next is your mute button PS symbol button d-pad and the last part your symbol buttons for these uh, you can easily align them they have the little grooves where they go in so you just gotta match that I also forgot your little options buttons now you can put all your pads back Next is putting a new touchpad. You got two screws, one left, one right. Take them out. Once you got that out, black piece comes out. This as well. For the next step, you're gonna have to use either a heat gun or a hair dryer. It can also work. You need to apply heat on the back right here. You can also do a bit right here. The whole point of this process is so that the glue can loosen up and you're able to remove the little board. Unfortunately, I'm gonna be using a blow dryer and I'm just not close enough to be able to have it on camera so I'll get back to you guys. I'm back. That part's always a bit of a process but I got it done. This is what the back looks like and that's because of the glue. So here's your new touchpad. You just have to align these two little parts together and then you can kind of just squish it because of the glue. You could even uh, reapply heat if you have to. Next you're gonna want to grab this piece Place it on top, then your black one, put that cable through it, then just put the screws back in. To put your touchpad back on the controller, put it right under, and then you're just going to have to screw it back down. Before we put this whole thing back, let's take out the L2 and R2 buttons. To replace your L2 and R2 buttons and make it look like this, you're gonna have to go through a uh, pretty tough process, but if you're patient, you can get it done. First, turn your controller around. You're gonna have two screws. Just take those out. When you take the screws out, this whole piece is gonna come out. This is the adaptive trigger next you're gonna remove this ribbon cable right here take out the screw three more screws here here and here once screws are out you can take this part out just pull up next this one and then your little wheel right here there's a metal rod pull it out from there you should be able to take it out just watch out with the spring just really quick extreme rate provided the part that attaches to the controller and that part actually comes out uh, normally it seems like maybe you won't ever have to do that but in case you do I'm gonna show you really quick I grab the back of my prying tool put it right here and then basically you're gonna push and kind of cover it so that the piece doesn't fly away and there you go that's what this piece looks like it just slides back in in case anybody ever needs to do that I wanted to show it 
put the L2 button in this little end right here you got to put it in there and from there this part can go in put your rod back in there in the hole you have to line it with the button then you get pushed on test it out from there you're gonna put your little wheel back and there's three little circles here make sure they're facing like this towards you this way and when you put this piece back it's gonna be at the end right here so it should look something like this then test it out you just gotta push this back push your button place the cover back in once your cover is back on put all your screws back together don't forget to reconnect your cable put your trigger back in its slot put its two screws back in now we can put this whole piece back in here watch out for the touchpad cable gonna put the four screws back together now once you put your screws back together make sure you have all your ribbon cables sticking out one two three and four and from there just reconnect them reconnect your battery holder put back the screw make sure to put this little piece back in place these cables can end up being a hassle I finally got this back in now you can reconnect your battery your back shell ends up coming with this little part right here a little pad you can take that one out and then put it on your new one time to put in the back shell Put your last four screws back in. You can put your R1 button back in. And your L2 button. I mean L1. The last thing left to do is put your new decorative strip in. And there you go guys i hope you enjoyed the video doing this one was pretty tough there's a long process on having to replace everything buttons and all that especially these triggers as you saw i put the light on just so you can kind of see its natural color a little more hopefully i did a good job on showing everything it'd be great if you can just give it a thumbs up because this video was definitely <laughs> exhausting but the way the controller turned out is actually freaking awesome it has a nice matte finish, purple matte finish to it. And this is a nice soft shell. The back doesn't have the pattern, but I think it's okay. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.